worthy of this great honor. In particular, I want to single out Bill Gamble, who nominated me. I don't know how much it cost him or what lies he had to tell, but I will never be able to show how much I appreciate it. It is the most meaningful and personal honor I've ever received. Second, I've been blessed and fortunate to have the success I've had. I want to thank all the people in my life who made me what I am today. Starting with my lovely wife, Jackie, who's here with me today. We've now been married for 34 and a half years. Most people think she should probably be in some kind of Hall of Fame or at least an asylum. Um, I don't know how many coaches use your wife as your scorekeeper. Um, probably why all my years that she started this in Nigeria, probably all the years in Nigeria, my, my assistant coaches have never been married, but we do put on quite a good show. Um, <laughs> also, my two sons, Brad, who's with me today. Um, sorry about the athletic ability I didn't give you. And Brandon, <laughs> plus my and Jackie's family, which have been so supportive throughout the years, especially all those times they had to help us through because of the coaching profession. I want to thank all the administrators that have hired me, including a great lady that's here today that I now work with at Iberia, my AD, Lisa Law. Without you, there's no way I would have ever been at Iberia. I know that I'm not always the easiest person to get along with. I want to thank all the coaches that I've worked with. Um, Adam Thornhill is here today with me. It was my assistant, Ann Crocker. Um, keeps reminding me of things I did. I'm surprised I'm up here. Um, Special thank you, Adam. I appreciate everything you've done. Um, once the summer, Adam and I get together and um, go over um, coaching ideas. And um, pack line defense was our um, topic this summer. And um, quite honestly, about the pack line defense, I'm not sure we would have gotten to Columbia, Adam. I sure appreciate it. Thanks for making me look good. Again, I know I haven't been the easiest to work with. I want to thank all my players. I know I'm not always the easiest coach to play for without you. I wouldn't be here today. I'm a firm believer in the quote that you can't play the Kentucky Derby on jackass. <laughs> Finally, my deceased father and mother. My father was no coach, but taught me the value and virtue of hard work. My father was the hardest working man I ever knew or do know. My mother was a person who taught me to be brutally honest. I think that's a good trait, though. Some of the groups I mentioned earlier that might not agree. I am so proud and glad to be standing here in front of you today. I am still not sure this isn't a dream. I'm a big fan of David Letterman. My wife thinks it has something to do with me being sarcastic like him. I don't see it, but she might be right again. Anyway, I've come up with 10 reasons I never thought I'd be elected to the Hall of Fame. Number 10, my high school career. I have to acknowledge that there's a real irony to my particular nomination to this elite group. In truth, I was not much of an athlete. I never played varsity basketball in high school. Cut after my sophomore year. I did score two points on the sophomore team. Thank goodness for those B games. <laughs> my six-year college career. That doesn't include a master's. I wasn't a very good student either, needless to say. Number eight, the cheater. The third game I coached was at a junior high school in Illinois. I went on the floor during the game and told the referees that they were cheaters. <laughs> to make it better, my in-laws were at the game watching me coach for the first time since it was the school district my wife had graduated from. <laughs> Thank goodness we were married, and I'm not sure she would still be with me today. <laughs> by, by the way, I soon got out the rest of our cheaters. She's not very good at her profession. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mention I'm truly honest. And believe it or not, I didn't get technical that game. That's how bad they were. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven, six for six basketball. My next job was an assistant coach at Kids up Iowa. Not a bad game, except it was girls basketball, and girls in Iowa were playing six on six at that time. Now, six, is, six for six is not five versus five plus a couple of extra people. It's three versus three at each end. Interesting game. After the main basket, the other team gets the ball at half court and players only get two dribbles at a time. I'm thinking how many times I like my teams now to get the ball at half court. <laughs> how many kids I would just only dribble twice. Anyway, I would say at that time, my career ended up like Hall of Fame bound, either five on five or six on six. <laughs> Number six, taking a step backwards. Next year, I became the sophomore coach at Western Grove, getting to work under Hall of Fame coach Tim Moore. 
That year I found out real quick how much I didn't know. I remember Tim telling a player, Jerome, you trust my, when I tell you, yes, coach, I trust you. Oh, Jerome, you suck. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a great man. I got to say, it was one of my most enjoyable years to ever coaching basketball. But I didn't have a full-time job at that term. I was able to get a full-time job at Valley Park, a great school district, but I wasn't actually climbing up the basketball career ladder. Number five, another great career move. After two years at Valley Park, I decided to move to Stillville, Illinois for two years. I interviewed on August 1st, and they were going to hire whoever came in through the door to the guys that sat here and had a lot more important things to worry about. <laughs> Who was going to be the freshman basketball coach? I led the freshman team to an only 13 record my first year. I was ripped after the second year, which means reduction in force. So after seven years, I had neither been a head coach nor even had a teaching job. Definitely wasn't in the Hall of Fame at that time. <laughs> Number four, my first head job. Finally, I got a head job at first year. Terry Morrow was the principal and had athletic director who hired me, and I wouldn't be here without his trust me. That's the good news. I had to coach both boys, varsity and girls varsity at first year. Um, you guys have done that for year after year. I don't see how. I would yell at the girl that said, that happened in the boys' game. So, um, <laughs> I wasn't very good at that. I was not very good at all time casting. The bad news was I got fired after two years. Had a parent school board member sit on the top bleacher at practice, ready to pounce on me like Ultra on a roadkill. I'm pretty sure she wasn't on the Hall of Fame nominating committee. <laughs> I got a head coaching job at West County in Leadwood. I have to thank Terry Scandrick, who was the principal at the time. What he didn't tell me during the interview was that West County hadn't had a winning season in the past 23 years with a winning percentage of below 20%. My 8 and 33 record the first two years didn't help me. I also got thrown out of my first district game, but I had help. I told the rep that his call was ridiculous, and he didn't agree with me, giving me a technical foul. Now, while the other team was shooting the foul shot, somebody sitting in the crowd behind me hollered out that the ref was ridiculous. Couldn't agree more if the ref didn't agree, so the game team, how do we win? So after finishing the first season, 4 and 17, and getting thrown out of the district, I wasn't sure I could ask back, but they were pretty used to having bad teams, so they had me back. <laughs> after my second year, I had a career record of 29 and 63. Wasn't thinking Hall of Fame, I'm pretty sure nobody else was either. <laughs> Number two, the question. You probably have a few questions yourself. How did this guy get up here? <laughs> there are worse coaches. Will you ever finish talking? The answer to those was I'm not sure on number one, two, yes, because I did get up here. And number three, I'll be done soon. I was at the University of Kentucky and coached Patino basketball clinic. At the social, I somehow got into a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Coach Patino. And I got to ask him a question. I said, Coach, we're going to play man, but we'll also have to play some zone. What defense would you use with your center only being six foot? His response was, your center's only six foot. <laughs> he mentioned it two more times during the conversation. I'll never forget the luck on his face. Probably the same luck he had when he found out the dancers in the dorm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my wife's crying. I'm so <laughs> We did finish that season 16 and 11. West County's first winning season in 25 years, and won West County's first district ever. And I think I knew basketball. The successful short term is going on 11 and 15 the next year. And number one, conditioning. Um, I'm making the conditioning. Um, kids volunteer for it. I'm coming out for the team. I don't know if this is really good or not, but I figure I'm up here now. They probably won't change it. Um, we were running one day. He had a um, I also coached softball for some years in Crocker. Running one time, we were the only kid um, laying there on the ground. And I'm thinking, ah, he's not tough, we'll just go on. So we um, ran the next group. I'll never forget their looks on their face. They were all looking at him when they ran by him. A couple minutes later, we called the ambulance. Um, <laughs> hadn't gotten up yet. And um, I am um, thankful to say he's just dehydrated and I'm Oh, yeah, it was a big butthole. Um, <laughs> third season, we had a winning season. Fourth year, um, we had another winning season. I had my first two seasons in a row. And um, 
It took off from there, thank goodness. A lot's happened to me in the last 31 years. When I do look back, I realize how unbelievably lucky I've been. I want to thank you so much for thinking of me today. I feel like the luckiest man in the world. Thank you very much. <laughs>